Welcome everybody. I've got kind of a different video for you today. I'm not gonna be doing a review on a cigar or an accessory. I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of information about where your cigar comes from. In specific, the tobacco plant that is grown to produce the tobacco that is in your favorite cigar. In case you wonder what I'm smoking, I am smoking the Alec Bradley Prensado. This is the, uh, the Robusto size. Bonus if you can give me the name of the movie that it, it's a feature movie, features the, uh, the Alec Bradley Prensado little hint. It is contained in a humidor in a car. Bonus points if you know the movie where you can plainly see the Alec Bradley Prensado in the, uh, the humidor in a car. It, it, if you've got really good eyes, you can see it while the, the movie's going. To really notice it, you have to hit that pause button. But uh, you can plainly see that it's the Alec Bradley Prensado. Bonus points to anybody who can tell me the name of that movie. I'm not going to give it away. you got to tell me in the comments. Well, how am I going to show you the makeup of the tobacco plant? I'm not going to show you on, on the screen here. This is really tough to see, and it's small. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the green screen. This is my first time ever using it, and I'm, I'm really excited to try it out. I'm going to step over there now, and uh, why don't you join me? Before I turn this puppy on and get to it, please, 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 Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like on this video if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I don't get anything for this. I don't make any money off of this. I am not uh, monetized on, on YouTube, nor will they uh, with a, uh, a channel that's about tobacco. I do this for you guys. And to keep things going, uh, to keep as many people seeing these videos as possible, give me comments, give me thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel. That really helps the viewer count go up. It helps more people see these videos. If you like what, what you're seeing, chances are somebody else might too. If you don't like what you're seeing, roast me in the comments. I, I'm a big boy, I can take it. Uh, but uh, if, if you like what I'm doing, give me that thumbs up. Let's get to the green screen. Welcome to the green screen. First thing I want to say is thank you to La Aurora for putting this graphic out there on the interwebs. These guys know tobacco. They've been doing it for a long time and uh, they, they put this wonderful graphic together and put it out there on the internet with a, a bunch of information about tobacco. And thank you very much for, for putting this out there. This is easily the best graphic representation that I have seen of a tobacco plant. Kudos, thank you. and. Please don't yell at me for using your graphic in this video. Well, what I'm going to do is give you a 10,000 foot flyover of the parts of a tobacco plant. I am not going to get into a ton of detail. There's plenty of information out there. Heck, you can even take courses from Tobacconist University on this stuff and, and really dive deep. What I'm going to do today is give you a very quick flyover version of the parts of a, toba a tobacco plant, what they're used for, what they're not used for. First thing I'm going to start with is something that they don't have listed on this graphic, and that's up here. These are the flowers. Yes, a, a tobacco plant flowers. Like with any other flowering plant, this is where the seeds are. Reason I'm saying this is I had a question the other day about a cigar that somebody had that was really good that they were told that it used Cuban seed. It's kind of misleading. Is there anybody going to Cuba and loading a suitcase full of Cuban seed and bringing it back with them to Nicaragua or the Dominican or Honduras or wherever else and, and growing those plants? No, it, that, that simply does not happen nowadays. And there's reasons why. One, for, for the purposes of, of US consumption, it's not entirely legal. Yeah, there's, there's loopholes on that, but it's not entirely legal to take those Cuban seeds and grow plants with them for consumption in the US. 
it's a whole gray area nonsense. Now, the big reason why is if you take a plant that's grown in Cuba and then say it's, it's a grown plant and you transplant it. It's, it's growing in Cuba, it's doing well, that plant is used to the climate that's in Cuba, it's used to the soil conditions in Cuba, and you take it and you transplant that plant to Nicaragua. That plant is gonna wonder what the heck you did to it. It's not gonna be used to the soil conditions, it's not gonna do well, it's not gonna be used to the climate it's not going to do well in its new environment. And the same thing goes with seeds. Seeds have that DNA of the plant in them and that DNA of that plant is used to growing in Cuban soil under Cuban climate conditions. If you take that plant and grow it in Nicaragua or Honduras or the Dominican or Ecuador, it's not gonna do well. So what they did, it, now, not to say that back in, in the old days when you know, all these you know, OGs left Cuba, yeah, they brought seed with them. They, absolutely they did. But what they found is that the Cuban plants didn't do well where they went. If, if they left Cuba, went to the Dominican, or they went to Nicaragua, or they went to Ecuador, or they went to Honduras, those Cuban plants didn't do well there. So what did they do? They cross-pollinated. And that's what they do today. That process is still going on. They produce plants that are going to do well in the climate conditions and the soil conditions of the countries that they're grown in. They want to produce plants that, of course, have the characteristics of the flavor that they want that tobacco to have after the plants are harvested, the leaves are harvested off the plants, and those leaves are dried and cured and fermented and aged. They want to have certain characteristics, uh, flavor characteristics, strength characteristics. But there's other things that you got to look out for too. One, does the plant do well in that climate? Some climates are, are, are different than others. Like in Ecuador, you have a lot of shade, what's called shade tobacco grown in Ecuador because in certain growing regions in Ecuador, you have a natural shade. You have a natural cloud cover. It doesn't get real direct sunlight. So if you take a plant that does well in direct sunlight and plant it in Ecuador, it's not gonna do well. So what you gotta do is you gotta cross pollinate these plants and get the plant grow the plant that has the characteristics that you want, not just in flavor, but hardiness of the plant. You want the plant to be able to grow in the conditions where you put it. It's got to stand up to direct sunlight if, if that's your climate. It's got to stand up to not direct sunlight and, and shade if that's your climate. If, if you have an, an overly rainy growing season, you want a plant that's going to be resistant to mold. You want a plant that's going to be resistant to bugs. So what you do is you take the plants that show those characteristics that you want and you cross pollinate them with plants that show other characteristics that you want and you create new varietals of plants. That happens to this day. It's happened since the, the, the first people in the Americas did it when, when, when they were, were growing tobacco for their use. It's been happening forever. And it still happens to this day. You still have different varietals of tobacco that are grown that have the characteristics that the growers and the blenders and ultimately the companies want. Now, Cuban seed, it's it's a misnomer. It's misleading. Some companies use it, and yeah, I, I guess they're not lying to you. If 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 those plants that they're, they're 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 harvesting for the tobacco that they're using in those cigars, if the seed from those plants originally came from Cuba, then I guess they're not lying to you. But did that seed come directly from Cuba? The plant grown in the Dominican, and then the cigar get produced and, and handed to you? Is that a Cuban seed cigar, that's up to you to decide. Now, parts of the plant. 
we got into the flowers here. There's another part of the plant that's not represented here, and that's underneath that, slightly underneath. You have a couple of leaves in here that are called the, the corona leaves. Those leaves typically aren't used. They're small leaves, they're strong, resilient leaves, and, and they're typically not used in a cigar. And they're, they're not represented here, probably for that reason. Uh, underneath, you have the lajero. The lajero is the first part of the plant, working our way down, that's used in the production of cigars. These leaves are at the top of the plant. So, for that reason, these leaves have the most nutrients. They get the most sunlight. They are the hardiest, the thickest, the, the, the strongest in both flavor and nicotine strength of all the leaves of the plant. So with cigars nowadays being big and strong, which is you know, how, how Americans tend, to, tend to, to like them, why don't you see cigars that are just like all Lajero? Just, just make a cigar with, 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 with all Lajero and, and don't put anything else in it and, and, and just Lajero. One, the cigar would be virtually unsmokable due to strength. And secondly, the cigar probably wouldn't burn all that well. The leaves in, 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 that comprise the, the Lajero, the top of the plant here, they are strong, they're resilient, uh, they, they are thick, they are veiny, and because of all that, they don't burn very well. That's why sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll find a cigar that will burn, like that'll, you know, what I call torpedo, and, and, and you know, it, it'll, it'll have that cone at the top of it where the, where the ash is, and it seems to be burning more along the edges than it is in the middle. A lot of times the, the Lajero is, is in the, 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 the middle of the cigar, and that'll burn slower than the rest of the cigar will. That's why sometimes you'll see that, that ash burning like, like a, a torpedo where the inside, the, the, the very middle, isn't burning as fast as the outer layers are. Lajero burns slower. Sometimes it, it's, it's hard to get it to light at all. It, it, you don't want to have a cigar with all Lajero. It'll be unsmokable, it'll be way too strong, and the thing won't stay lit if you can get it to burn at all. Underneath that, you have the Viso and the Seco, all through here. This is where a lot of the tobacco in your cigar comes from. It comprises a lot of the filler. It comprises the binder. Um, a lot of times you will see the, the Seco leaves at, at the bottom you can see the plant here. These leaves are, are, are large, which lend themselves to wrapper. Uh, so you will see that the Viso and, and the Seco being used primarily in, in the makeup of a cigar. The Lajero is there for, for strength, for flavor. The Viso and the Seco, yes, for, for flavor. Uh, the Seco, not so much for strength. Viso, yes. I, but these, these leaves are not as strong as the Lajero is. Uh, they, they, do, they, they are flavorful, uh, and, and they, they burn a whole lot better than the Lajero does. So you will see these leaves used primarily in your binder and a lot in your filler besides the, the Lajero that's in there. Now, you get farther down than the Seco, and you have what's called the Volato. The Volato isn't used a lot. And the reason for that is it's at the very bottom of the plant. It gets the least amount of sunlight, uh, and the leaves are thus are, they're thin. They don't have a lot of flavor or strength to them. They're not going to impart much on your blend. So those leaves are not used as much as the rest. Where they are used, and, and a lot of manufacturers don't use them at all, where they are used with some is because of those characteristics of those leaves, they're thin, they don't impart a lot of flavor, 
but they burn well. So they're used in combustibility. If you have a blend that, say, is, is a little Lajero heavy and uh, it's, it's not burning all that well, it's, it's tough to get it to keep burning, maybe adding a little bit of Volato to that blend will help the combustibility of that blend. It's not going to lend much to it as far as, as flavor, definitely not strength, but what it will add is combustibility. It'll help that cigar to burn burn better. A lot of manufacturers don't use it. Some do. Where you'll find Volato a lot is in those less expensive cigars. They don't use the, the Volato in, in, you know, really good cigars much. Where you'll find them is in the less expensive cigars because it's, it's kind of the leftovers. So you'll, you'll find it in the less expensive blends. You'll, you'll notice that those less expensive cigars tend to burn a little hot, tend to burn a little fast. You, know, it, you, you, you take a, a less expensive Toro size and a, a, a premium cigar that's a Toro size, and the less expensive one is gonna burn a heck of a lot faster. It's not gonna last you as long. Well, it's due to two things. One, there's probably not as much tobacco in that less expensive cigar. It's one of the ways they keep the costs down. The other way they keep the costs down is by using tobacco that isn't used in a lot of their other more expensive blends. They use that, that Volato. And it burns faster. It doesn't impart a lot of flavor. It's, it's not uh, you know, a horribly flavored or, 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 or you know, strong tobacco. So they use it in those less expensive blends. That's why you see that your less expensive cigars might burn a little faster because that's what they're using. Well, that is a 10,000 foot flyover of the parts of a tobacco plant. If you have any questions on this, leave them in the comments. I, I, I love to, to get questions in the comments. I love answering them. Uh, if, if you wanna learn more about this stuff, there's a lot of information out there on the interwebs. Uh, La Aurora has a, a, a great website with uh, a lot of information. Uh, you, like I said, you could take even courses at Tobacconist University and, and get a certification in, in this stuff if you really want to. Thank you very much for watching.